Hello, welcome back to Twin Flame Energy Online Podcast. I am your host, Dominique. And I am your co-host, AJ. <laughs> What's going on? This is podcast number seven. The title of today's podcast is Trust. How to Navigate Your Story and Traumas with Others. Yes, 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 mm-hmm. yes. Which is a big one. Traumas are always big. Yep. So, and so is trust. How's your day going <laughs> so far today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got some lemonade. I'm good. I'm real good. In my tea. Mm. No comment. <laughs> Going to the movies later to see Eternals, taking our kids uh, on a school night. Yes, we do things like that. Boop, boop. Absolutely. <laughs> a Marvel movie comes out, it's a holiday. Exactly. You know. All right. So, <laughs> first article I have today for us, it comes from headspaceleads.com. Six ways traumas affect our relationships. So, mm. um, reason number one loss of childhood i never really had a childhood or can't remember much from growing up Mm -hmm. so it says people who experience a very distressed childhood often cannot remember large (laughs) swathes whoa that's word threw me out of their early life (laughs) and this is my first time reading it (laughs) they may have they may remember particularly vivid moments sometimes called flashbulb memories which don't have any context to them they often do have a clear story of themselves as a child up through adolescence early adulthood and sometimes even later in life they don't have a clear story Mm -hmm. this autobiographical sense is called a curative narrative Right. Coherent nev- narrative. I'm going to start reading soon, people. <laughs> <laughs> In attachment theory and can be absent, underdeveloped, false, or under simpli- oversimplified. Gotcha. Excuse me. Many people have told me that they feel like their childhood has been stolen and without such foundation, adult identity is compromised. Mm. That's pretty deep. Mm. Yeah, only remembering like waves and yeah. Certain pieces of your childhood. Yeah. I would say that's probably like a, you know what I mean? I mean, I wouldn't know about everyone, but yeah, that, that's very true. Very, yeah. very true. Number two, missing parts of oneself. I've always felt like something was missing, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> With chronic developmental distress, children often disconnect important parts of themselves in order to survive a form of dissociation they may come to rely on one major persona in order to have stability and make Mm. it appear as if everything were okay such as being an exemplary student while having little to no real personal life later in life they may feel like parts of themselves are missing through personal growth and therapy they may rediscover and even create a new these missing parts sometimes they are there stowed away for better times if you will but younger feeling than their everyday persona it's common Mm -hmm. for these missing parts to be associated with uh, particular emotional states Mm -hmm. and memories and reuniting leads to a fuller sense of identity this so reminds me of doom patrol if you watch Mm -hmm any superhero shows there's a show on hbo called doom patrol it is extremely wacky and yeah. only for those who are real superhero marvel dc fans um there is a character on that show who all of her personalities are characters on the show yeah and yeah. so it's quite interesting that as i was reading that part mm-hmm. it was just like mm-hmm. oh, i was just picturing her right 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 and I, I feel like a lot of people um, almost have that same thing instead of it being considered or called multiple personalities. It's just based on how much that particular emotion or that particular side of you changes. Right. Because we, we were kind of talking about that the other day. Yeah. Where I was like, you know, when you're angry, you may not even like the taste of chocolate at that moment. But when you're happy, you probably want chocolate. 
Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that that's two different people. That just means that emotion has a certain feeling that doesn't tie into your happy feeling. Exactly. Just like that movie Inside Out, you know, Mm -hmm. happy, joy, anger, sad, all of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's different pieces of us that takes control when we are in a certain mood. In mm-hmm. a certain energy, mm-hmm. so that's that's interesting to, to really think about for sure. So number three, and like I said, these are the six ways traumas can affect your relationship. So the third way is attraction to destructive relationships. I'm the kind of person that always dates people who are bad for me. So it is not uncommon for people tra- traumatize by key caregivers to end up with friendships, romantic relationships, and even work settings in which are not good for them. They find people who fit their traumatic identity, Mm -hmm. even when they're trying to make different and better choices, leading to re-traumatization through the repetition of the past. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Yeah, yeah. Number four avoidance of relationships i'm someone who is better off alone alternatively people with negative developmental experiences involving intimate relationships may opt to avoid closeness and isolate themselves sometimes this starts early on and sometimes later as an attempt to break a cycle of harmful relationships Mm. yeah I, i get that i get that And number five is avoidance of oneself. I don't like to think about myself. It only makes me feel bad. Especially when childhood trauma was defining, was a defining component of key relationships, parents, Mm -hmm. siblings, and other important people. Any reminder of those experiences may lead to efforts to manage painful emotions and experiences through escape from oneself taken to mm. the extreme this may lead to one lead one to self-destruction mm. so basically completely avoiding yourself or taking care of yourself right right and lastly number six difficulty integrating emotions into one's identity i'm not the kind of person who has strong feelings about things hmm when feel okay yeah, yeah so ahead. they really don't yeah. care about it yeah when feeling has no place in one's family of origin emotions become split from identity they continue to have influence leading to confusion and an unstable sense of self because one is unable to predict let alone manage strong emotions we mm. need to, we need that emotional data to be fully ourselves and to make decisions Mm. emotional dysregulation leads to problems with impulsive decisions and gets in the way of forming healthy relationships with others so moving forward Mm -hmm. while it can be disheartening to read about the effects of developmental trauma in adulthood and daunting to contemplate doing the work of recovery and identity formation beyond that of the traumatized self therapeutic efforts are effective mm-hmm. that's a lot of good interesting information when it comes to traumas and things like that very 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 uh very interesting all right of course i have a couple of more articles here one in particular is the impact of unresolved trauma in relationships and this one is coming from colorado recovery services.org And once again, all of these links will be down in the description box. And I just wanted to read just a little bit of this. Um, It basically was talking about the origins and effects of emotional trauma. Emotional injuries result from any experience in which one feels his or her life or well-being is endangered. Mm -hmm. These experiences might include the shaming of a younger person by a teacher or a parent, the molestation or beating of a child, the loss of a job or divorce, a sudden death or a change life-changing accident or being sent to war our human instinct is to protect ourselves and we do that often by finding ways to cut ourselves off through denial that what we have denial that we've been hurt disassociation from the painful event or uh, repression of the memory of the trauma 
The symptoms of unresolved trauma may include, among others, addictive behaviors, inability to deal with conflicts, anxiety, confusion, depression, and an innate belief that we have no value. Mm. So simplify that one, if you could. I can't. (laughs) Would you like me to repeat it? Well, just in your own words, yeah. How about in their words? Our human (laughs) instinct is to protect ourselves. Okay. And we do that often by finding ways to cut ourselves off Mm -hmm. through denying that we've been hurt, Mm -hmm. disassociating from the painful event, or repressing the memory of the trauma. Symptoms of unresolved trauma may include addictive behavior, inability Mm. to deal with conflicts, anxiety, confusion, depression, or an innate belief that we have no value. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, it's funny is, especially as a child, Mm -hmm. like this deep trauma thing, I don't, I I can't, I don't relate. And I know that makes Mm. me very fortunate. The things that are deep rooted for me, Mm -hmm. I don't see as trauma per se. Okay. You may, you know, in terms of like growing up in like a Christian household Mm -hmm. versus not being of that dog. I'm not of a dogmatic religious mindset now. Right, right. That's really like the extent of it. I've never endured any type of abuse or anything. So for me, I'm reading this and I don't. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't. Maybe it's. You know, possibly a subconscious suppression of micro things that have happened that may not add up in your mind to being traumatizing, but little things that possibly have happened could could very well be pieces, little pieces of it. You know that we don't know. Well, here's an not ex- not just saying it's you, but yeah. Well, I'm saying you know some people might be like, well, I'm good. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm great. well, here's an example. I think because of where I am in life now. Any of those things have already been resolved. Mm -hmm. Growing up in a predominantly Christian household and a dogmatic lifestyle, Mm -hmm. I always felt like something was wrong with me because I just could not connect to it Mm -hmm. in any way, no Mm -hmm. matter how hard I tried. And then coming out on the other side of it, my whole family pretty much coming out on the other side of it, Mm -hmm. I've already found my connection and I know why I didn't connect to it. So now those parts of me have been resolved Mm-hmm. So I don't have any gaping wounds. All of that stuff is healed. You get what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I'm fully aware of who I am, where I am, why I am, okay. and the source. So I'm not pressed about old stuff like that. Like, we laugh about it now. You know what I mean? Right, right. So that's why it's, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily connect for me. My parents have been, I'm not a child of divorce. Yeah. I, we grew, I will say the only thing that I do say that I don't, I don't see it as a trauma, but some other people might see it as a trauma Mm -hmm. is that we moved around a ton. So when it comes to stability, I don't even know what that feels like, but I see it as cool. Like I, we've lived in this apartment for five years and I'm like, yo, where's the new like I guess maybe that. Same here. I mean, we we yeah we definitely. I went to a ton way. of schools. Different schools, all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for me, I'm yeah. just like some people might be. You know, sometimes I think about what it would have been like to grow up somewhere, live in a house, be around the same people, grow up all your life. Yeah, I don't know what that feels. Yeah, like. Yeah, or like have a yeah. backyard and a dog and all those different things. Yeah. Like, None of that, yeah. you know, and so that's why I do push, hopefully, you know, Elijah's 15, Eliana's 9. I want to be able to give that to them before Elijah graduates from high school. Mm-hmm. Just so they can say they at least had it for a while. And then if Elijah decides to go away to college, he'll have somewhere to come back to, his room, that Well, this that is whole probably thing. been, this, this, this run here has probably been the most consistent, though. Yeah, but it's also years. been the most mundane and boring. Well... I mean, yeah. I mean, sometimes that's the thing. It's like 
one or the other. I you prefer know, the one. The, <laughs> I know, but it's like for us was jumping and bopping around a lot of times traumatizing more than we think it was. See, like what I mean is, is like sometimes we may not even be able to identify what could be something that was not giving us stability or mm -hmm. setting boundaries or being able to do certain things or teach us those those things. So then in our mind, we're like, well, but whatever, we're good. I mean, it was it was cool to to go here, to go there, to, 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 to say I've been in so many different places. I've been in so many different states. And to say that is like cool, but then it's like, but yet, what am I not getting? What am I not saying that right. I don't know? Like, because yeah. I mean, honestly, going from Michigan to down south was very, very extreme for me. Mm -hmm. When we went from Michigan to down south, that was a lot because the culture change was just like massive and you have an idea of what you would think that it's going to be like and then it's like whoa everything is so different you know what i mean so you know i don't know I'm yeah i get that i get that it i think at this point you know there's always regardless of how you grew up mm -hmm. There's always going to be the what if of the other side of the coin. Right, right, right. Who right, would you right. be if your life was the other way? You know what I mean? Right. So right. I think for me, like I see people who live in apartments, for example. Like we've always lived in apartments. Mm -hmm. And some people get into these apartments and they make these places like their home. Man, man. yes. Like, and I can't relate to that. And, I remember like, as a kid. <laughs> I had said something once, like painting, and I remember getting a response from my parents that well, we're not gonna be here long, kind of thing. That sticks yeah. with me. Yep. So in, in apartments, I will say I don't make them my home. I've never have because yeah. I'm like apartment is a pit stop, yo. Like that, why waste your time? And see, you just brought up a memory that <laughs> I I didn't remember or so I suppressed, mm -hmm. which was I secretly had like like the desire growing up in our apartments that we had and when we went different places of wanting to paint my room different colors and do different things you know cosmetically to the house mm -hmm. I, I like i had these feelings like I, sometimes i would even have books with different colors yeah and i was like man i would love to have something like that that would yeah. be cool that i never could because it's like well it's an apartment it's not you know it's not ours mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. so it's like growing up for so long saying this is not ours. Yeah, that that's a trauma. So then that's a thing where you don't think about is more traumatizing than it could be. Yeah. So then you're like, well, yours. what is ours? Because we always got a new car. We always got a different car. We always got a different house. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, do we own anything? <laughs> you know what I mean? So then you think about it. You know, it, it, it's simple thinking. But it is but a, child it is a type can, of trauma. A child can think like that. It does kind of shape how you do things, definitely. Right. Because, like, even we've been in this apartment five years, and we were not expecting that. We were expecting mm -hmm. a year. So it was really, mm -hmm. we won't be here. Then it was like, renew. That's true. It was like, renew. Then it was like, renew. That's true. And it's like, okay, what the hell? Like, in five think, years, we could have made it a home. See, and that's the thing. I think that we are stuck in that mindset. Mm -hmm. But then we physically are working in the mindset of trying to be stable. Yeah. So it's like working so, against them. Or mentally like, we ain't going to be here. We ain't going to be here. Ain't no need to. And then we like, five years later, we ain't going to be here that long. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it's like, wait, wait. We were already here. We could have had more joy. Yes. We you could. squeeze every bit of joy that you can out of any piece of anything that you own. Yeah. And that's true appreciation and gratitude. Which is something so, I'm just now tapping into. It's so definitely it's, not innate for it's me. It's like a subconscious yeah. uh, lacking. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing I've learned this week is, yeah. and not to throw us off topic here, and I might end up putting this, I might end up throwing this in the description box in terms of mm -hmm. just resources. Because I'm also a student, and I was reading some interesting things today just about just like your brain and like mm -hmm. critical thinking and stuff like that. And it's kind of taking me like 
on down this rabbit hole of just like understanding that the way we think and it's it's also a skill like in terms of critical thinking if you're not in a position where you can answer certain questions like does what does it say here it says to what extent have i analyzed the beliefs i hold mm -hmm. to what extent have i questioned my beliefs many of which i've learned in childhood right. to what extent have i demonstrated a willingness to give up my beliefs when sufficient evidence is presented against them to what extent am i willing to stand up against the majority even though people might ridicule me mm. And the thing that kept coming up is like when you are becoming a critical thinker, mm -hmm. you have to be willing to know that in some cases you're not going to go with the majority, which is literally our lifestyle. We right. are definitely not like that at all. Yeah. But just coming to a realization of how deep critical thinking goes, it goes even levels farther than where I think we're extremely critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. But even just this week, realizing that there's so much further we can go even in that critical thinking you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. and it's like when you get to the point where you're open to that i think that is even a place where you can open up putting yourself in a position to resolve unresolved traumas right right you know right and that, that's deep and i and it's, and it's probably some people who like i don't i ain't got time to think <laughs> you know what i mean right and it's like i'm like uh, I don't know what it's like to not be able to think as critically as we do. Yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? And we were talking about something else the other day, but I don't want to get too deep into that. But yeah. Yeah. That's, it, that's a big thing, though. And it's like, unless you are asking questions, like if you, if, if somebody, if they come on the news and they tell you to do something, and all you say is, okay. yeah, I'm going to go do it because they said to on the news, you're not a critical thinker. That, I'm just going to put that, that out there. Simple. Yeah, it's that because simple. at the end of the day, regardless of anything, mm -hmm. you should always be asking questions. Yeah, like we were, yeah, the that's why. What, that's what it was. We were talking about like trends and following things and everybody has a certain this or certain that or they get in the beats and the the iPhones and the Apple Buds and the, you know, it's yeah, like all I, these little things <laughs> that people are just like gravitating to. And it's like, yeah, like I said, that what I said was think. people like I said, people don't even ask me what kind of phone I have. Mm -hmm. They just automatically assume I have an own iPhone because everyone else uh, does. Right. And I'm like, I don't have an iPhone because I actually thought about what phone I wanted and not what everybody <laughs> else had. About it. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? Like I actually really looked into like the specs and things like that. And if you actually start looking into that kind of right. stuff, the then you might make is, a different the decision. The biggest thing is, is like, you know, people come in, you know, doing music and stuff like that. And I'm like, and th their assumption is you ain't working on a, a Apple or a MacBook. You know what I mean? And we own MacBooks, and I was so like, we know how they work. I was like, my MacBook in the corner collecting dust. <laughs> I don't mess with that for music because I build my own computer. So it's like I think about the parts that's in it. Mm -hmm. I think about every piece about it, and I want the best for what I'm, going, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And if I just say I'm getting Apple because this person used the Apple, and that's what they did, and they made that. It don't make sense. I'm not thinking at all of myself. Right. I'm thinking about what they're doing. Right. So then what am I actually doing? not critical thinking <laughs> at all at all and it's funny because the thing about it is a person if a person comes up to you and says i use an apple because mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah 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 i have full respect for right. that person that's because fine. it could be the best thing in the world for them that is, yeah. but that doesn't mean it's the best thing in the world for me it's not about everyone it's not about telling everybody come over here and get an android or mm -hmm. pc mm -hmm. it's about mm -hmm. everyone knowing why they made the decision that they made exactly. and it not being something exactly. stupid or like it's pretty right my friend had it i got new emojis that you don't have <laughs> <laughs> like, but here we are off topic right, right. <laughs> so back to trauma okay and the impact of trauma on relationships living with unresolved wounds and bringing up all the resulting behaviors to your relationship is clearly not conducive to 
a, blah, blah, to a healthy, happy intimacy. When your emotional health has been compromised and... What? Yep, I'm having a reading moment. Mm -hmm. When your emotional health has been compromised mm -hmm. and you shoulder, soldier through life, thank you, sucking it up mm -hmm. without resolving the trauma that has occurred, the wounds will continue to fester primarily in how you perceive and treat yourself and then spilling over into the relationship with your significant others. That's deep. Because yeah, the trauma, that yeah. part there, it'll primarily fester and influence how you perceive and treat yourself first. Yep. And then and it will spill out into your relationship with your significant other. Yeah, I can easily see how that can just highly affect. That's a big deal. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a serious effect on your relationship when trauma comes into play. Yeah. Because you're you're already closed off to things that will solidify your relationship as being what it is. Yeah. You're already closed off to so many things, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the other person may be closed off to the things you're open to. And then it goes back and forth. So you're always at a blockage. Exactly. You know, in a relationship. It says, when the trauma remains unresolved, there will likely be frequent triggers that cause an emotional response, behaviors on the part of others that unintentionally act as cues or reminders of the original trauma. For example, mm. if you had parents who were emotionally distant or physically absent when you were a child mm -hmm. and you felt abandoned, when your spouse comes home late from work, you may feel powerless and rejected. Mm. Isn't that cool? I mean, not yeah. cool, but deep. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> like, no. no. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, it's like everything ties into, everything ties into your parents more than you think. I know. And then it's like then our parents, parents. I know. And parents, parents. It's like well, it, it goes it, back it, forever, it, and you, it keeps going. But if you think critically, it's funny. It goes back and back and back. But you can't blame anyone because it keeps going back. Right. Everyone is working with what they were given. Exactly. So <laughs> the point is. Is to stop blaming and just start, start making working. The, start working. Stop blaming. Stop start blaming. Working. Start working and Literally. thinking critically. Yeah, because you can't keep sitting there talking about, well, you know, this is why, this is why, and this is why. Yeah. I mean, yes, it is. It is. And believe me, it's very easier said than done. Yeah, because you have to say the but why. You gotta in order start to by stop acknowledging it. You yes. have to start by because that's it. the only way to stop it. If it's like, hey, right. I know for the past three generations we all pick at each other in this way, yeah, and, and then we all grow up having these certain holes and, and traumas and right, you know, things that we think about ourselves. But if we stop doing this now, our kids won't have this same crap. Right. And then you can change things moving forward. But that's not to go back and point the finger at people. You did this to me. That's why I feel this. And that's, that's why that's it's, like, counterproductive. It's, it's, it's tough. And it's like at, at some point you will break the cycle. Mm -hmm. But you have to start by acknowledging one thing at a time and at least going at it. You know, exactly. Exactly. Well, this is a perfect time for us to take a quick break and we will be back in a moment. All right.
And we are back. That was trauma as usual. Vapors. Woo. Yeah, that was that was big. I like that one. And it is available everywhere. All right, all right. Well, it is that time again. Time to talk about the book of the month. Once again, it is the 8080 Marriage, a new model for a happier, stronger relationship by Nate and Kaylee Klimp. And kind of made an executive decision because we were trying to do this thing of going through a book every month. But as I got into reading the book, it just seemed like more time needed to be spent. It was taking me longer to read the chapters because I was stopping and talking about it and all these different things. So I kind of broke it up. So instead of doing part two this week, we're just going to do the first half of part two, which will be two (coughs) chapters. So we're going to stretch this out over the next few weeks, but I feel like we're definitely going to get a lot more out of it. So this week, um, today we're going to be talking about first half of part two, which is cultivating a new mindset. And that was chapters four and five. So just to kind of start off reading some of these hot spots from chapter four, that was titled Radical Generosity. So I'm going to start off by reading two different scenarios, which were like really cool to like hear the difference in these two different scenarios. So. Two different relationships. This is relationship number one. (laughs) It says, from the moment we had kids onward, we were always out of step. We lived with a constant mismatch of expectations. Even when he could easily help, he won't volunteer. He rarely says, I can pick up the kids today, or I will take care of this. That is, until it becomes an ugly battle. Everything rests on a tactic understanding that I do more. I manage our finances. I do our financial planning. I do play dates. I've taken it all on. He will never even initiate a conversation about who is going to drive the kids to their activities, which says to me, he doesn't even see it as his responsibility. And when it comes to my career, he's one of those guys who always, who will always say, I will never get in the way of your career. But his actions tell me that he can't take up more take up a more challenging role at work because the kids will suffer. So that's relationship number one. Mm -hmm. Everybody heard that? All right, now this is relationship number two. The day we moved in together, we were sharing a bathroom for the first night. We were standing there by each other's sinks and he turned to me and says, what is our decision whether or not we want to leave the toothpaste on the counter or put it in the drawer? And I thought, Oh my God, I love this man. It's the little things. He's super helpful. He unloads the dishwasher and does so much for the kids. If he goes to the gas station to wash his car, he picks. He will pick up a little card and write me a couple of sentences thanking me for being an amazing mom and wife. The card then shows up in my purse later that day and I think to myself, I am so lucky. These small gestures go a really long way. Both of us are willing to go 99% of the way for each other. And we do that by going out of our way to do little things here and there. Unexpected compliments, surprise notes, and other small acts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is (laughs) two different relationships. And it literally, from the beginning of the book, this is literally the first thing you read. And this chapter is called Radical Generosity, the 80-80 Mindset. So... The second quote gives us a glimpse into the world of 8080. Life in the second world feels smoother, brighter, more vibrant. Marriage sounds, well, amazing. It's a world where you wake up wondering what you can do to support, delight, engage, or even turn on your partner. You're not worried about doing more than your fair share in this world, nor is your partner. Your partner becomes your mirror reflecting your own kindness and generosity at every turn. Yeah. yeah. Any thoughts? That, I mean, that it, it just, I know this, this book is just filled. I know that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it kind of dives into the nitty gritty and the real things. And yeah. a lot of times it's not, it's not the relationship that's like, oh, this person cheated or all oh, this person you know, uh, domestically is, you know, hurting me or this person, this blah, blah, blah. It's sometimes a lot of times it's the, it's the small things that cut a lot deeper. 
It's like little pieces of mold on a piece of bread. After a certain amount of time, the whole piece of bread is just dead. Well, okay. <laughs> if you want to talk about bread. <laughs> I mean, like, every time, yeah. when people talk about little things, I think about that saying, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, something like that. Yeah, I, I, I look at it as like a, um, like a, a uh, uh, you know, illness or something. Like, it's just internally eating away, mm-hmm. eating away, eating away. And eventually, you know, your lung is failing. Eventually eventually your heart's failing you know what i mean and unless you like really truly heal it from the inside out it's hard to really to get that and i think this book really goes into the small things that really eat away a relationship Mm -hmm. so then you know five years in six years seven ten years in you're like this problem has been there but then it gives you the tools to be able to say you know what this is how I handle it. So I don't have to fall into that place or that category. I don't yeah. have to, cause it's, cause really it's all about it, all these little things are going to always be there mm-hmm. in every single relationship. Mm-hmm. It's about how you communicate around it, how you talk to each other, how you, the simple things will fix the little simple things. Exactly. The simple things will fix the simple things. Exactly. That's simple as that. So radical generosity. This is the 80-80 mindset. It's a mindset that can appear like an, like ordinary generosity. Generosity changes the atmosphere of a marriage. It's doing more than you have to. Mm-hmm. It's contribution for its own sake. Mm-hmm. It's giving with no strings attached. Generosity flips the ordinary mindset of marriage upside down from asking, what have you done for me, to asking, what can I do for you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there are three elements of mindset that go into this 80 80 marriage so as you will see this 80 percent spirit of generosity reshaped marriage mindsets in three different ways the Mm -hmm. first is contribution or what you do contributing at 80 percent to housework child care emotional labor planning logistics and investment in the strength of your marriage means you're always trying to do more than your fair share. The second is appreciation or what you see. Instead of scanning our partner's acts for moments when they mess up, drop the ball or did less than their fair share. We look at life through the lens of appreciation. Mm -hmm. And the third is revealing or what you say. Radical generosity pushes up from the safety of withholding our resentment, disappointment, and conflicts from our partner to revealing the full truth of our experience. Mm. It's a push to reveal your truth as a gift to the marriage so that you can live together with less tension and resentment. Simply striving towards 80% rewires your thinking from tit for tat and quid pro quo to ideas that might have seemed once crazy. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the one thing that comes up that is so interesting that I know everybody who's listening to this is going to think about is inequality phobia. And it talks about it here on page (laughs) four. (laughs) Inequality phobia, the moment you go beyond 50%, you have, a grap- you have to grapple with one of the most unpleasant thoughts of 50-50 life. I'm doing more than my spouse. Mm-hmm. And for those of us, this thought immediately spawns into a torrent of other thoughts. <laughs> Why am I doing more? Are they more important than me? Is their time more valuable than mine? Are they somehow <clears throat> better than me? Do they have more power than I do? Then, and then the negative starts to spill on and Completely. And then... It ends so that's definitely something that you have to know will come but at the same time understand that it's literally just part of the process Mm -hmm. because one person has to start in order to like get the energy flowing in a different direction you know right right and I think uh, over time is it, it becomes a lot of just not doing Mm-hmm. for the other that then it starts to be like okay listen you know we got an issue we got a problem 
Like, let's, you know, you don't, I, I think it's the more unconscious when you do something like without saying it kind of thing, or when you like acknowledge it without, you know, you just do it, that, mm -hmm. that, ha that holds a bigger impact. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, like if, if you like to watch a certain movie mm -hmm. and you want me to watch it with you and I'm like, you know, well, okay, I watch that and then, but if I just do it instead of saying, okay, now if I watch that, can you, uh, play the VR with me? Mm -hmm. You know, instead of yes. saying that, just, just do it anyway. Yes. Because just, that might just, bring just up. Anyway something for that other person yeah and you don't then, even give the other person the opportunity to have a thought the, yes the opportunity so then so then what happens is just like like and then when it happens you just feel like man you know i really i really enjoyed watching that movie with you that was awesome mm -hmm. you know i really enjoy us you know playing the game together that other day that was like so fun and it, you know and then it's like that sparks something a little piece right and then it's like and then pay attention to those other little things you're like man, I would love to have this blah, blah, blah for dinner. Okay, just do it. Right. And then you make it and you're like, okay, I was just one that, you know what I mean? Right. And then little things start to add on, add on, add on. So. So there it's the three elements of mindset. And so the, we're only going to look at one today. Mm -hmm. And the first one obviously is contribution, what you do. Mm -hmm. And this is chapter five talks about this. And it's so funny, this part in particular. It was talking about basically <laughs> when you have a moment where you kind of like spaz out or when you lose it, <laughs> right. it says, <laughs> so when you lose it, when you slip back into the 50, 50 mindset of fairness, you catch yourself and you return to radical generosity with a thought. Like my partner seems really stressed tonight. I wonder what else I can do to be supportive or we're on the same team. My washing dishes helps us both. This shift in mindset has two powerful effects. First, it's contagious. My wife and I always try to think, what can I do to help? And when everyone has this attitude, it becomes contagious that even the kids see it and feel inspired by it. Mm. The second benefit of this shift in mindset is it's personal. Your radically generous mindset changes your experience of these everyday acts. It dissolves the energy drain of resentment, replacing it with kindness and love. Like, has there ever been a moment where your parent is going through something and mm -hmm. someone says, hey, can you go do the dishes? Your mom's not feeling well. You go in there feeling different when you do the dishes. It's not... Once again, I got to do the dishes. You almost have this feeling of I'm doing this because I'm helping my mom. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like in changing in the three steps of changing your mindset. If every time you go to do something, one of those mundane, you know, doing the dishes, doing the laundry yeah. that you could look at like, oh, I'm sick of doing this. You'd be like, I'm doing this for this person. It right. changes you and puts you in right. a heart of gratitude and yes. appreciation yes. versus being like, like, so it's exactly like what he like what the book was saying. It changes your experience of the task. Yes, if you actually have a heart, <laughs> well, <and> yeah, you <laughs> actually care. <laughs> you're like this. I I know I'm helping this person, and if we do that, you know, all the time though, how much further we could you know we could go. Exactly, exactly. It says the mindset of radical generosity is essential, but. So is alignment in your action and your active contribution to this thing. Okay, let me start that over. I'm going to be reading better next week, I promise. <laughs> the mindset of radical generosity is essential, but so is aligning your acts of contribution to the things that actually delight, surprise, and support your partner. This mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thinking of this as understanding your partner's radical generosity map. This map tells you where to go and where not to go with your acts of contribution. It is, it is essential to understand because the very same act that lands with love and appreciation for one person may land with disgust and irritation for another. Here's the example. Consider giving your partner a forehead kiss, okay? Mm -hmm. One couple we spoke with told us that this was the ultimate act of generosity. When the husband gave his wife a kiss there on the forehead, she felt held, supported, and connected. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. But another woman told us that she felt patronized by the forehead kiss like she was a child. And she explained, I tell my husband that if he wants to kiss me on my forehead, he better be ready for a punch in the gut. Wow. You see how different that is? I know. Yes. Yes. That is so serious. That is. is, Yeah. That's deep. And of course, they went ahead and they referred to Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, Mm -hmm. and let everybody know that you definitely should definitely check that book out as well. We may or may not visit it at some point in this podcast. Um, Understanding your partner's radical generosity map can be the difference between connection and frustration or even between appreciation and a jab in the stomach. (laughs) So just reiterating those five love languages are words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Yeah, because you, you got to know who you're dealing with, mm-hmm. you know, no matter what. Like, you could be like, but I gave her a new car. And, they and like, she's like, I don't she, give a shit about a car. She probably hate that. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> she's she, like, she, she, she might gifts. think that, you know, you never know. Like, like our example, I hate surprises. And yeah. it's, you, yeah. when used people to. say that, no, I still hate them. No, I mean, I'm talking about I used to. Yes, you have an obsession with surprising people. Yeah, I used And I despise to them. Like, I don't, I don't like them. I think. I don't know fully why. <laughs> I think part of it feels like I'm giving my power taken away from me. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't like them. Yeah. I don't like the force. It's like this force thing of feeling like you have to respond a certain way. It's just a lot. They actually yeah. anger and it me. Could, it could be true that the, the, it's, the, it's the people. So no, it doesn't matter to, who it is. Like around, no, I'm talking about even when being, you, like, no, being surprised. Even when we're like one-on-one. Just even when there. we're one-on-one, I don't like it. Like I remember... It was Mother's Day, and it was just me, you, Ellie, and Elijah. Mm-hmm. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't like surprises. Uh, I don't like when it's like, close your eyes. Like, I, it could just be like. She, she's happy. like, like, here, here you go. Take no, it, it could just it. be on the table like it's Mother's Day. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. That's fine. But I just yeah. don't like surprises. I don't. No, so I just to it. wrap up the book, <laughs> the book of the month time for this month. Mm-hmm. When you do these generous acts, do it without receiving credit right or excuse me seeking credit right that's what it says right Right. do it without seeking credit and that's a big one so some examples were restock the fridge while your partner isn't there without announcing your kind act in return plan a surprise date and don't tell your partner how hard it was to plan or how long it took you fill up their car with gas without telling them you did it those are just some examples to um you know, just give you a good idea of what we're talking about here. Right. What's going on? Well, all right. So it is that time to pick a card, any card. And once again, we're picking from that best self intimacy deck. And just to let, you know, just if you're joining us now today, um, the, the categories on the cards were about you, intimacy, relationships, past, life, and random. So let's go ahead and pick that card. All right. So let's. I don't know which one. It says intimacy, <laughs> relationship. I can pick. We can pick from relationships. So I'll just pick a random card. Okay. How can you tell? Like, They're color coordinated. <laughs> uh. So from the relationship card, mm-hmm. over the past month, in what way are you feeling unappreciated by me? And uh, say that one more, time. one more time. In the past, over the past month, in what mm-hmm. way past month. Okay. are you feeling unappreciated by me? Uh, past month, past month. That's a really good month. question. Um, my thinking taps. I, I don't know. Uh, this past month, I don't, I'm not. It's been so much going on, honestly, that I just haven't really been in that in that mindset. What about what about you? You have you have. I do have one. <laughs> of course you do. You can say yesterday. What, what, what happened it's yesterday? Only, honestly, it's only been this week that I felt anything. This week? Yes, and that and that I do I take responsibility for it as well. I will say that. Mm-hmm. I because you know I just started working last week Mm -hmm. so this has been my you know the end of my first in the beginning of my uh second week and i need to put something in place Mm -hmm. i need to write down all the chores that get done in the house Mm 
yeah. so that they're on the wall in terms of everything that needs to get done. I, ins- right. I still, a lot of times want to do things myself because I do them a certain way. Mm-hmm. Like if I say vacuum the living room, you, you guys will vacuum the living room, but I'll still find a piece or a corner that I'm like, <laughs> no. Yeah, no. You know what I'm saying? So then I no, end I up get just it, doing stuff I, myself. I the same way sometimes. So I just want to get in a flow where on the days when I'm working and I may not be here to do the dishes or whatever, that the kitchen doesn't look like it does now, which is like yeah. something exploded in there. I, I'm confused. <laughs> like I walk in there, I'm like, whoa. And I kind of like I walked in whoa. and I turn around and walk away. <laughs> like, it's it's going to get taken care of, but it's just kind of like, who lives here? Yeah, it is like, and then, yeah, it's, it's I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. So do you have one? But wait, wait, did you, did you tie that to me or? No, I just, I feel like because I'm at work, why is nobody doing the dishes when I'm at work? Or you know what I mean? Oh, like, it just oh, feels oh. like, well, that's because it's like I if w- I work two days, then the day I'm off, I'm like trying to put things back together from the last two days when I wasn't even here kind of thing. Well, I will say, I will say it's because I was working on the house. I was working on the house, um, for hours, actually hours, uh, trying to get, but Everything think about together. the love language. Right. I would better, in a place like the kitchen, mm-hmm. would mean more to me than the living room. Well, that's what that's what I'm saying. But that's why it's good to to talk about it because right. you never said that before. So now I'm I'm learning something new. Whereas to where when you walk in the living room, all I would hear you say for months is this living room this living room yeah but you know what for me the living room even when the living room feels like there's this there this there it feels the living room to me feels like a 10 minute fix so in my mind in terms of jobs the living room is a 10 minute fix in my brain yeah whereas the kitchen i'm like well yeah on a normal day absolutely i did some deep cleaning though i I did i like moves like the whole you know i did the corners and the the baseboards (laughs) you know i was all you know so that, yeah. that was the only difference with that. Which I'm fully appreciative. And I was appreciative when I came home that day, too. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, saw, and I just been focused on that. But, what about you? You got to ask. I, honestly, I, I... Do you want to table it and it'd be the first thing we do next week? If you can. I can. We can do that. We can do that. Because, I mean, honestly, I don't feel like there's anything where I'm just like... You're just waiting for me to do something to... this week so you can talk about it next week. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I'm that amazing. I'm just playing. All right. <laughs> so it's that time again, guys. It is time for us to draw for next week's topic. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Wait, do you want me to pull it or are you going to pull it? I'm going to pull it. Okay. But I'll let you read it. Well, I mean. Here you go. Positive energy. How do you keep it? Flowing in your relationship. Okay. Hmm. It's nice to go from traumas to talking to positive energy. How do you, you know? keep positive energy flowing? The yin with the yang. Relationship. <laughs> that's that's deep. Okay. Yeah, so okay. it's something to think about. So once again, that is positive energy. How do you keep it flowing in your relationship? Think about that over the next week. Until next time. Until next time. Any final thoughts for today's podcast? No, that just let's let's get more into this book. That's really it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Completely understand that. Well, that does it for this week's podcast. If it sounds like we're rushing, it's because we've got to go get our daughter from the bus. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so all of the articles used to drive this conversation today forward, you can find in the description box, as well as links to the book of the month, the 20, excuse me, the 8080 marriage. Thank you for tuning in to today's podcast. And be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And of course, ignite, ignite your, your energy. energy.